I have just filmed a book haul and I just... Ugh, I don't think it turned out very well. <laughs> it's so warm today which is why I look so dishevelled and everything was going wrong during filming so I don't know if it's going to end up being any good or if I will need to refilm tomorrow. I'm going to import the footage in a second and see if I can save it all but um... <laughs> Hi, hello, we're here now. Um, it's actually Wednesday and I thought I would tell you what I'm actually reading because I have started reading two different books but I'm not too far into either of them so I have started reading The Tombs of Atuan by Ursula Le Guin because I am the host of Le Guin Along and on I think it's the 5th, it's the first weekend of July we're going to be having a live show for books two and three. That's notebooks two and three and I haven't yet read them so I need to do that. I'm going to be reading the second book this week and the third book next week. They are luckily only really short like 100 pages each so shouldn't be too much effort and I have found audiobooks for them so I'm listening to those or at least I am for book two. But The Tombs of Atuan follows a girl who is believed to be a reincarnated priestess so she's taken to this kind of temple and she is told to live a very certain way and everything that they worship kind of centers around these tombs. I'm not too sure how it links with the first book. I don't think it does directly but it is set in the same world of sorts. This religion seems to go against the sorcery of the first book so I'm very intrigued to see if it does come up any more than that. But all that's really happening at the minute is that we're kind of exploring this underground tunnel system that people don't typically see because only this one priestess is allowed to see them so not too much is happening in that at the minute besides somebody has just tried stealing a thing that's very very sacred so I don't know if that's going to be what the main plot centres around, I imagine so because it's not too long of a book. For me it is going a little bit better than the first book did just because I like learning about this side of the world more than the world that we learn about in the first book but I'm not entirely sure if it will extend any further than that because not too much is happening. <laughs> Other than that though I have also started reading Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy which is actually my Patreon book for June so I needed to hop on this and it is also the last book in my Make Your Myth Taker readathon so I definitely need to have this one done this week. I just realised I'm holding it upside down. So this one centres around a matriarchy of women who are called bone criers and they kind of act as gatekeepers to the world of the dead. However to become a bone crier you have to kill the person who is destined to be your true love and we follow three different characters, two of them who are best friends, one of which is said to become one of the head matriarchs and another who is a guy who wants revenge against the bone criers because they killed his father. Now I am only two chapters into this so I don't have any opinion on this one yet to be fair. Very excited to be reading it with my patreons and see what they think of it and this will probably be my main read of this week. So that was just a quick update because quite frankly nothing else has really been happening. I haven't read anything in the past two days or so and I also haven't done anything in the past two days or so. I did go into town because I had to collect my copy of Empire of Gold which is up there. I did pre-order it in the store and so it was meant to be delivered to my store but I thought they would cancel it because it came out when lockdown was still a thing and the shops weren't open yet but once the shops did open they sent me an email. In fact they sent me two emails saying you can come and get your book now and I was like oh don't really want to head into town but I did um, and it was fine like there wasn't too many people around. I have just been working on a lot of social media stuff, a lot of emails. It was kind of one of those days though where it started off pretty anxiety ridden and not that great and then just did a complete u-turn because well for multiple reasons. Backtrack, yesterday Bloomsbury announced the novella that Samantha Shannon is writing called The Dawn Chorus. We have a novella coming out in July for the Bone Season series and I'm so so excited because it's been three years since the song Rising came out and oh. Book four isn't coming out until February 2021 so we kind of have a novella to bridge the gap between them and reading the synopsis of the novella, don't do it unless you've read the song Rising, but reading the synopsis and knowing what the main theme of the novella is going to be, I know this is going to break my heart but also like rejuvenate my heart somehow. I know it's going to hurt and I know it's going to be painful but I know it's going to be worth it and I'm so so excited. So excited. But then today 
Bloomsbury also decided that within 24 hours, not only are we going to have a Samantha Shannon reveal, but we're also going to have a Sarah Jean Marsh reveal, and A Court of Silver Flames has been revealed, and it's coming out in January, and I'm very, very excited. <laughs> ah, I can't deal with this. My two favourite authors have both just had reveals within 24 hours, and quite frankly, I am not okay. <laughs> I am both living and dying, whatever that makes me, I don't know. So that's been one thing about this week, at least, that has just had me like, Yes. Not that it makes any difference to what I'm doing right now because nothing's happening right now, but excitement. But after that little outburst of everything, I am going to go and look at my haul footage and see if I can save it because if not, I need to plan my day around filming tomorrow. Fun times, fun times. <laughs> Hello, hi, how are you? It is now Friday. No, it's not. It is now Thursday. <laughs> I have a thing to unbox because it's not actually fairy loot. I just realised that would be a thing of confusion. This is actually a box that I believe is sent to me by Robbie from And His Nose Stuck in a Book, who is one of the kindest souls I have ever known and oh my god. Like, I'll leave a link to his channel down below obviously, but just, he's so underrated. He is one of the kindest people and he said that he was sending me a box of Lush stuff which I believe is what's in here. So I'm very, very excited. I feel like I'm just surrounded by some of the kindest people and <laughs> my heart doesn't know what to do with it. I absolutely love Lush products. Like I only really buy stuff from Lush and The Body Shop because I do generally love their products and I love that they're both cruelty free. So whenever I need any kind of bath or shower products, I always buy from there. But my Lush supply is running low and so this couldn't come at a better time. He has put, um, this in, which is going everywhere. Thank you for that, Robbie. <laughs> Robbie, there is a lot more than you needed to send or should have sent, and oh my goodness. They all have little notes with them. This is so cute. This is so lovely. Okay, so this one is the Cocoa Sugar Body Scrub. Ooh, and he seems to have paired them with mythology and fantasy related things. Paired with an Anglo-Saxon goddess of the spring has decreed that you shall use this rabbit inspired sugar scrub to give your body a rebirth. Oh. So this is the cocoa sugar body scrub. It's a little rabbit. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love it, I love it. We have a butterfly bath bomb. Psyche, a Greek goddess of soul, has given you this butterfly to revitalize the mind, body, and soul. Allow this butterfly to plunge you into waters that will transport you to Elfame. Then maybe you can meet your own cruel prince, Wicked King, or become the queen of nothing. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Oh, its wings broken off. Oh, that smells really fresh, I think is the word. So we have a little butterfly, or rather quite a big butterfly. <laughs> oh, this is all this video is going to be, just me going, oh. <laughs> Do with that what you will, Gavin's probably already making a gif of it. <laughs> yes. So I asked on Twitter for lip balm recommendations because I have this thing where my lips peel every single day. It's a thing that the doctors don't even know what's going on with it. But in the meantime, I wanted lip balm recommendations and I have taken some now and I really, really enjoy them. But one of the things that people kept telling me to do was use Lush exfoliating scrubs and I do use them. And so Robbie has sent me one and this is my favourite one. <laughs> he sent me the chocolate lip scrub which is just, oh it smells like a terrace chocolate orange which I now really want to eat. But this note says, embrace the sense of inner nonsense and buff your lips beneath the sugar sky. I found your own door within this chocolate lip scrub. Oh, I don't know how you say this name. Iskaiko? That's probably not how you say it. Mayan goddess of chocolate and fertility has decreed that your lips are to be reborn. So exfoliate the dead skin away with some chocolate and begin anew. I will do exactly that. <laughs> There's another lip scrub. We have a galaxy lip scrub, which is blue. I haven't tried this one before. That smells like bubblegum. Is it bubblegum? Because I swear there was a bubblegum one. What flavour are you? I can't figure out the flavour. <laughs> but this note says that the sky is not the limit according to Nut, the sky goddess. So buff your lips and transcend beyond the stars. Follow a squad 312 and take your lips out of this galaxy and leave your lips as bold as Aurora Rising. <laughs> I am loving these notes far too much. 
why is there a book in here, Robbie? You did not say anything about there being a book in here. He put a book in and I don't know why and it's mythology. I have never seen this before, oh my God. Norse mythology, tales of the gods, sagas and heroes. I can add it to my mythology collection. I only have one book about Norse mythology and it's an illustrated one that is meant for children. And then I have a Greek mythology book which has a Norse mythology section, but I don't have any that are specifically for Norse mythology and Norse mythology is one of those mythologies which I'm not specifically drawn to, but I think it's just because all of the stories that I have read retellings of, I haven't particularly loved, but I think the actual mythology itself is something I could get on board with, so we're going to find out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Robbie, thank you so, so much for this. I am living my best life. We have mythology themed lush products. Like, this has made my entire day. It's made my entire week. I'm having a great time. So that was a little unboxing of sorts. I need to actually go and organise my room. After my June book haul, I have quite a lot of books that I need to fit on my shelf somewhere, but that means I need to really reorganise my bookshelves. Like, I have a lot of books that don't have a home, how my shelves are currently organised, so I need to do a bookshelf reorganisation. Although, I'm really warm right now, like, it's so hot in the UK and we don't do well in heat. I'm somebody who is very likely to have Reynards, which means that I'm usually really, really cold all the time. So when I'm hot, I'm like, what do I do with this? I don't know how to manage this level of living. <laughs> but I do also need to read, so I might actually do that while we're in the height of sun during the day and save the reorganisation for this evening. But I do really need to get on with reading Bone Cry's Moon, which is the last book for the readathon and also my Patreon read, which by the way, I don't think I ever mentioned it properly, but the Patreon book club that I have, I will obviously include the book within all of my videos. Like I'm not taking any content away from people, but with Patreon, it just means that you get access to a private discord. And I will also be sharing a video review of that book towards the end of the time period. So that's all the differences. I know that I keep referencing it and I don't really explain it anymore, but it's just because I don't want people to feel like they have to join or anything. So just for context, you will be seeing my thoughts on that book as well, just in my standard videos. So it's nothing to worry about, but yes, I do really need to get on with reading that because I only read two chapters yesterday and that's not enough. I've just not really been in the reading mood this week. I think it's the heat. I literally just want to lay on the floor somewhere and just not move. But um, that's not very predictive, so <laughs> I'm going to go and read. I've decided. <laughs> actually have some reading updates because last night I finished reading The Tombs of Atawan by Ursula Le Guin. This is the second book in the Utsi series, this is a bind up of the first four. And I finally read the second book. The live show for books two and three is on Saturday the 4th I think it is. I feel like I have lots of conflicting thoughts on this because I enjoyed it more than book one but not too much more because I feel like not all that much happened and this feeling of contradiction just kind of carried on throughout because like with the writing style for instance, this book read a lot more fluidly than the the first book did but then at the same time when it came to the backstory behind like 
not necessarily political background but there was just this backstory behind the religion and this one particular object that you find in this book and I sometimes found it difficult to follow that backstory for some reason which is bizarre because I'm used to fantasy and I'm used to quite complicated storylines but I think it's just because Ursula Le Guin has this tendency to info dump and she'll just give you all the information within one massive babble of a page and I just found it difficult to follow that way so it was really bizarre to kind of feel like I was flowing through it a lot easier but then also be like I'm not really understanding what's going on. It's been interesting though because I read back through what people were saying on the discord server for the read along and somebody said that this feels like a metaphor for walking away from an abusive relationship which I can definitely see that and within that I also just found it interesting seeing how this book tied in with book one because I initially thought they were going to be two completely separate things and they kind of are but they're also not this is what I mean when I'm just like everything is one massive contradiction so I have many many thoughts on this which I'm kind of glad for because with it being such a short book it can be hard doing a live show for it but I think I at least have some topics to talk about and um hopefully it will generate some conversation within the live show. So I rated that three stars which is pretty average. I don't have too much hope for the rest of the series if this is how the first two books are gone because I've just been kind of like eh. <laughs> and if I wasn't hosting a read long I feel like I would just DNF the series but here I am. In other news though I am now 120 pages into Bone Cryer's Moon and this book is so melodramatic. <laughs> it's so melodramatic the entire time that this book has happened. It's just been multiple characters going, you're gonna die, no you're gonna die, no you're gonna die. <laughs> it sounds really petty when I say it like that and it doesn't sound entertaining to read but to me it is and I do feel like the level of tension that is needed for this book and between the characters is there because it's very much a case of all the characters hate each other out of prejudice and all these preconceptions that they've built up and just like years of being dedicated to a certain kind of mindset and it's really interesting seeing them all clash. I'm also just finding the bone cries themselves really interesting because there's quite a few different ways that they use magic I guess if you would use it as magic so they rely on the moon and the stars but they also rely on bones and it's just quite interesting seeing how they go about the world and how they live and what they believe in. It's really quite interesting. It's not something that I've read anything like before. I am really intrigued though because the synopsis put emphasis on the fact that one of the main characters wants to kill the bone criers but that is already happening. We've already triggered that kind of plot line a hundred pages in so I don't know what the rest of this is going to be about <laughs> because it can't drag on for that long so I don't know what else is going to happen in this book but I'm very excited to find out. I'm hoping to get halfway through this today and then we have another 24 hour readathon happening for Make Your Myth Taker. It's the third and final one. So that's happening tomorrow. I won't be going all out like I will be sleeping and stuff, but I'm hoping it can motivate me to get towards the end in this. Like I'd like to have this finished by Sunday. But I also think tomorrow I'm going to focus on reading Restless Slumber because I still need to review that one. And I've been dying to get to it, but because I was already filming the reading vlog that had an enchantment of ravens in and I didn't want to clash two different fairy books together, I've been holding it off, but now I need to. It's finally the time that I can get to it. If you don't know why I'm so excited, the first book for Tuna Swan was one of my new favourite books and I just I can't wait to get back to it even though I know it's going to hurt. So hopefully tomorrow I am going to be reading the entirety of Restless Slumber. I don't know how big it is actually. If it's around the same length as Futter and Sworn, I feel like I can do it. But also I don't want to say that in case I jinx it. <laughs> so we'll just see how things go. Hopefully it will go well because I could do with a little boost towards the end of the readathon. <laughs> readathon is well and truly in progress. It's 3pm. I've barely read anything but I am now 180 pages into Bone Cry's Moon and I'm hoping I can actually make a decent den. Like I've changed my reading plans because I did say that I was going to try and read Restless Slumber today but then I realised how long it was and that's not going to happen. I have started it and I do hope to get maybe 
100, 150 pages into that, but I'm going to see how much of a dent I can make in Bone Cry's Moon because this has proven to be a fairly quick read, I say, while not reading it quickly. The pace of it is really quick and because it's so melodramatic I'm finding myself getting through the chapters quite quickly. So instead I'm going to actually see how far I can get into Bone Cry's Moon throughout today. I am still really enjoying it. As I said, I don't really know where the story is going because we've kind of hit the end of the synopsis so still don't really know what's going on but I am very very intrigued to find out. Don't really have too much more to update on yet because I have been doing nothing. Oh actually this arrived today which is Bad Love and I mentioned this in my book haul but it hadn't yet arrived but it's here now and I just love this cover it's so it's like bizarre but really pretty at the same time like it should be gruesome because it's literally somebody's face cut in half but I don't know, I just, I find it really eye-catching. But yes, other than that, I am going to go and read some more because I have too many reading plans and I know what to do with them. <laughs> I have a swollen eye and we're just going to ignore that. <laughs> but plot twist, I finished reading Bone Cry's Moon before midnight during the 24-hour readathon and I didn't start reading it. I was on page 90 at like 2pm when I started reading. This is 453 three pages long I think it is. A good few hundred pages today and it's weird because I feel like I've just been in a kind of slump all day like I've not wanted to do anything in the sense that I haven't been on my phone too much I kind of just wanted to be left in my own devices didn't really want to speak too much but then at the same time I didn't have anything to do so I quite literally just sat here most of the day reading because I had nothing else to do. <laughs> so for the most part with this book I was going to rate it four stars because I really enjoyed how dramatic it was, how fast-paced it was. I really liked the high stakes because with the bone cryers being like soul fairies or fairies of the dead and with people's lives being like intertwined with each other it was very high stakes from the beginning and it was all very much like if I die then you die with me and you can't kill him because then she will die too and it was just like that all the way through the book and I don't know I just like the melodrama I think this is one of the things that I can get on board with when it comes to young adult books specifically. And as I said earlier in the vlog I did enjoy learning about the bone cries themselves, the history behind them and how that led to this moment in particular. So I was very much set to rate this four stars especially because the characters themselves were all quite interesting to read about, quite fun to read about because quite often like they all had very distinct personalities and they would kind of collide in really interesting ways. But then in the last 50 to 70 pages maybe. It felt like because the rest of the book had already been so dramatic a whole bunch of young adult tropes were thrown in. Now I don't mind tropes at all, there's not really any that I outright hate. There's some that I dislike but usually I can get on board with them but with this one because it was quite literally just thrown in at the end it very much felt like the author didn't quite know how to make such a dramatic book any more climatic than she already had done and so things were just thrown in and it lost any sense of authenticity that I had because I was fully just on board with the story but then a couple of things were introduced and I was just like oh I kind of wish they hadn't been because it made things a little bit too far-fetched, it made things a little bit convenient, it made things a little bit of an eye roll moment so it was very much like a I wish that hadn't been done. That being said I did like the ending, it's more a case of the details that I didn't like, like literally the most minute details but I just can't say what because spoilers. <laughs> so it proved to be an interesting one and very quick to read apparently. I don't quite know how much more reading I'll get done in the rest of this vlog because I did start reading Restless Slumber but I only got like literally 4% into the ebook and I don't know how much I'll read tomorrow because I seem to be in this routine of reading nothing and then reading like three four hundred pages then reading nothing the next day then reading a few hundred pages then reading nothing again so if I'm carrying on with that routine I'll probably read nothing tomorrow. <laughs> but I do really want to get into Restless Slumber properly but I do also want to finish some of the books that I'm currently reading so that I can get them into my June wrap-up before June finishes. So I don't really know what to do, I'm kind of in a limbo moment of trying to decide but I mean you're about to find out. <laughs> Hi guys, so it is now Sunday but 
I'm actually going to end this vlog here, as predicted, because I have been reading today, like I haven't read nothing, but I haven't read too much and I need to edit this vlog as well this evening, so I don't think I'm going to read too much more, but I have started reading Restless Slumber. But to save myself the eye-twitching moment of having one book crossover into multiple reading vlogs for the sake of 100 pages or so, I'm just going to include it in next week's vlog so that it's all together and you can see my full reaction process and everything so that will be included in my next vlog however if you do follow me on goodreads then you will see a review before then that's always linked down in the description box if you are interested but i am just going to end this vlog here because i don't know how much more i will be doing today i'm just about to get in the bath and then i will be editing so um not much more to update on so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here if you're not subscribed already then please consider doing that down in the description box you'll find information to all the books i've mentioned all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now i hope you're having a lovely day and i shall see you next time with a new video Bye.